This is Start a Storefront. Parents will always want what's best for their children. Many go to great lengths to give their child just the tiniest leg up if that will mean success down the line. Whether that be after school tutoring, private music lessons, or waking up at 5 a.m. on a Saturday morning to drive your kids to practice, it's not difficult to find examples of parents making their child's development a priority. But what about that child's nutrition? Our guest today is Mark Brooks, co-founder of Brainiac Foods. Mark, together with his co-founder Jonathan Wolfson, found that certain nutrients were essential to early brain development, notably choline and omega-3. The problem is, it's not always easy to get your child to ingest foods that contain these nutrients. So the two founders decided to put a twist on a product that was already a hit in school lunchboxes, yogurt. By adding choline and omega-3 to yogurt, they were able to support early childhood brain development without asking parents, or kids, to sacrifice taste for growth. So listen in as we cover everything from why they're not trying to be the number one applesauce company, why food is the first line of defense when it comes to healthcare, and why it's not nutritious if it's not eaten. Now, on to the episode. All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Mark from Brainiac Foods. Thanks for joining. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here during Expo West Week, which is insanity. It's a good way to start. It's a good way to start. What was the first start, your first position? So, so you meet Jonathan, you have this crazy idea, you both have three kids, the most unreasonable consumer of all time, children, and you say, here's what's missing. What did you see in the market that you wanted to bring? You know, Jonathan had the original vision born out of circumstance i will say he had an advantage his dad's a neurologist so okay. wh whereas you know so his third uh, when his little boy was born was diagnosed with failure to thrive wasn't able to breastfeed so then the question came how do we get the nutrition in and having a background in food and nutrition sent him speaking to the experts speaking to you know to his dad his brother-in-law's a neurologist as well mm -hmm. so realized that there's this Part of what you're trying to get is not only you know, calcium or protein, um, but it's also things like omega-3s, right, for the brain. Mm -hmm. And he was told to relax about Little Booker and you know, go find good infant formula. Those guys have been doing a great job. But then the legacy question that kicked this off was, but what are you doing for like yourself and your older kids? They're eating lots of salmon and trout, right? Okay. And he's like, well, no, they're eating pizza, the, the pizza and chicken and... Chicken and fries. Chicken and fries. Yeah. Uh, and so as a like, well, and it sent him asking the questions. And as a serial entrepreneur, came up with this idea. We did the research and found that on average, we get about 20% of what we need for the primary constituent of our brain, omega-3 DHA. And when you see that, and you've been in this industry, the, the, the light bulb goes off and you're like, well, hold on. Maybe, maybe that's a gap that we could fill. Maybe we could put those things, put those nutrients into foods that my kids would eat. So I have three kids, about uh, five, eight, and 10. They are very real consumers, mm -hmm. right? They won't eat what they won't eat, and they will eat. And even if they will eat it today, they probably won't eat it tomorrow. You know, um, I love strawberry. I hate strawberries, you know. And so how do you deal with that? And so we, we decided that was a pretty good challenge. And uh, yeah, that's Jonathan insanity. roped me in and, and we, we took off. And was the solution always omega-3? We first go to science. Yeah. There's an awful lot in this space. And since we started back, I mean, the company started at the end of 2017, first product launched middle of 2019. Mm -hmm. Back then, the idea of what you eat can affect your brain was very foreign. Mm -hmm. Just the sort of space we love. Especially for kids, I feel like. Yeah. yeah, so there it's we are. Like we're like crackers and yeah. Definitely got to eat your protein. Got to get your calcium for the bone. You know, eat your carrots. You're going to get good eyesight. Not really knowing that that's lutein. Right. But the idea, even for me, when Jonathan brought this to me, was what I eat can impact my brain. Well, yeah, I'm, I've got a coffee here, right? It's the morning. Yeah. It's not my first uh, because it's an instant brain performance. Mm -hmm. You know, so we we know that, and so then when you realize the brain's made of and connected by nutrition that you have to eat, your body doesn't like produce it. Mm -hmm. Omega-3 DHAs, there's another one called choline. Those are in everything we do, and then there are some others. But we start and finish with the science. There's a bunch of stuff that we'll find that there's emerging perspectives, okay. which will turn into science, hopefully good clinicals, and then you'll see us put those in. Aside um, from fish, where else does omega-3 naturally occur? Like what food groups are, are we looking at here? 
Yeah, it really, you can get it from two places and back prior to this venture where Jonathan and I worked previously, we were actually taking algae. He was a pioneer in the field of taking algae and producing oils. Algae actually makes omega-3 DHA and other omega-3s. It's kind of a single cell plant, if you like, and it produces an oil in the same way that like um, sunflower or olive oil does. And it's fish that go eat algae or plankton or other things that accumulate omega-3s and then we eat the fish, right? So fish oh, don't make okay. the omega-3s. They eat them in these in, in this sort of single cell and plankton pass it up the food chain. and then pass it up the food chain. So we can get it from two places. We can get it fish oil okay. or we can get it straight from algae, which is just made in these big vats. Is that, is that kind of an aha moment? Because I would imagine that maybe tastes better than the fish oil because that's the next more problem. Direct. Next problem is he, we used to take multivitamins and he quit on me because he didn't like the fish oil. It tastes well, terribly. Yeah, well, for, <laughs> well, so alone, it, standalone, maybe. Yeah. Well, maybe you know, there's if there was a food brand that put it inside for you. Totally. Um, so, but look, it's down to the quality of the fish oil. It's down to if that fish oil has gone bad. You know, the smell of fish is exactly the smell of oxidized omega three oil. So, which one is it? So, it's oxidized oils, right? That taste awful. You know, fish burps, so, which makes launching a mainstream food product that you don't get the things you associate with bad supplements so that means um, it's bad if it if you get like a fish burp no it's natural i mean okay. look that that's fine if you if as you taste it you're tasting something that really feels off there are ways in fish oil where you know they can extract from certain types of fish and it's better quality so in the supplement space there are those that you would recommend and those you know which which don't have such you know good manufacturing standards uh, and then from an algae source if it's been exposed to oxygen, it's going to be the same. What was your first product? So now that you have the concept, the science is there, yeah. everything seems directionally correct. What's the first thing that you guys decide to launch into? The first thesis, which started with kids looking at, you know, Jonathan's three and my three was what do they eat every day? How can we make this a staple? So our first thesis, and also because of what we just said about these things like oxidize and they can go off and you have to put them in an environment that can work because there's a reason this hasn't been done before. It's like really hard. It's really hard to put it into a food product. Sure. It tastes good. Um, so we chose uh, yogurt because if you think about yogurt, it's already a sort of thick fat source. Mm -hmm. So putting in another fat source, there are folks like Horizon that had already done a nice job of putting DHA into milk. And so they sort of pioneered in that space. They put a little bit in and we wanted to put a lot in. So we started with yogurt, worked extensively to do yogurt drinks and yogurt tubes. We chose straight down the fairway flavors. So we weren't going to be, you know, thinking about turmeric and, you know, we were strawberry, uh, mixed berry. And we, yeah, we put it in the tube format that we thought new kids would gravitate to. Mm -hmm. And therefore we set ourselves up to sell alongside a go-go, uh, alongside a Stonyfield. And the thesis was great launching back into 2019. We got ourselves really nice distribution um, in January of 2020. We, okay. um, so super quick into Whole Foods nationally with our strawberry banana tube. We had a big old target distribution as well in January and then March happened. Yeah. And I suppose we could have had high that foresight, but, but cold chain, really hard, yeah. really expensive. We knew that part, but cold chain <laughs> pandemic where people were you know, buying all the milk and eggs off the shelf, yeah. stores had to necessarily turn themselves into like online fulfillment centers. So, you know, you would you didn't want to go in the store. I mean, all of us back then that were like wearing these weird That's masks. That's where COVID and, is. Yeah, yeah, COVID's in the store. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, want to, I want to drive by and pick up. So obviously at that period of time, we just been, we, we just put on Amazon a shelf stable product, okay. uh, applesauce pouches. And this, this absolute reversal happened. You know, we, we kind of hit the ground in January, kind of like, you know, doing a dance feeling like, okay, we're off. Yeah. And then that one really hit as many of us did, right? We just hit the pandemic and the reality. Yeah. And then this thing, just rocket ship took off on Amazon, which was shelf stable apple sources. People were just buying. Yeah. So then we went in, the problem reversed into a supply issue here and a demand issue on the other side. When you first launched though, to kind of go back to what you were talking about before, yeah. you have to like pick a consumer, right? And so is it a mom? Is it a dad? Is it the kid? Does the kid have to like it? Does that even matter? Because when I watch my nephews, they really just, if, if something has dinosaurs on it, they'll, 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 they'll put it in their mouth, whatever it is, including the dinosaur. <laughs> and so when it comes to your perspective, like, what was that like? All right, you have kids, you have a small test group. I imagine you guys did some research, but who did you think would purchase the product? Yeah, we obsessed about this because you, know, you, have, the, you have the luxury and the privilege of designing a brand name 
a logo, packaging, and then you look at taste and you've got to pick who you're benchmarking against. And that was one of the biggest hurdles, which is adults would taste the product and to their palate, they're like, oh, it's just too. Um, whereas kids would taste it because we were matching oh, against, you know, you pick a strawberry, do you pick an organic strawberry that's just beautifully, right. you know, or do you, or do you pick yeah. Skittles, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, but you've got to manage sugar. So, so we looked at it and said, right, we've got to make sure the product is, is absolutely kid guaranteed. So they, they will love this product. They'll ask for this product. Then, but how do we get them to actually taste it, right? And so then the packaging had to do a couple of things. First of all, I had to say, this is for your kids, you know, particularly when we were doing yogurt. So it had to be fun. It had to have a clear point of difference because, you know, what is, I've never heard of this. Yeah. So how do you get that across? And so you end up with too much on the packaging. And then how do you distill that down over time? But yeah, we were selling to, essentially selling to mom, often dad, but the kid is the repeat consumer. Mm -hmm. If you're paying four or five bucks for something, um, you're not going to do it twice if you've still got, you know, six out of eight yogurt tubes or three out of four drinks. It's a tightrope to so walk. It's so funny, isn't it? To think about like kids being the ultimate decision maker in right. the household, but you know, it, they have it no does purchasing make purchasing power yeah. themselves. Yeah. And so let me ask you a weird question. Like <laughs> what do kids care about the most in your research? Is it the look? Is it the taste? Oh, taste. Taste. Yeah. Taste wins. Taste, taste, taste. I mean, they, okay. they certainly don't care about the price. But they do care. So we spent a long time. We put characters on at the beginning because characters were in a category. And, and then we're like, right, so who... Did you have to make your own character? Yeah, we had to make... So we, we sat there with oh, all wow. sorts of <laughs> great creations. And then, of course, you, you get into a, a lot when it comes into... Okay, so gender. I've got two daughters and a son. So we had... And I'm a big believer in there being many primary display panels on a package because who knows how they get stacked and that that's borne out i haven't yet done up the, the bottom but i should we put a, a strong female character and we figured let's do a six to uh, an eight to ten year old so because if i'm six i'll aspire to that and if i'm 12 I, you know i want so we try to find that line of and then we thought well how do we make sure in the playground, you know, <laughs> on the blacktop, oh, I'm not going to get bullied? How am, right. when I bullet it, when I pull this thing, you want to be cool. Oh, you yeah. want to be cool. Yeah. So you sort of have to gravitate towards it's okay for boys, so funny. and it, it it was crazy. And even designers, you you end up sort of leaning into these sort of. Um, so we had this sort of Superman fist forward flying space thing going on, and they put the guy in it, the boy. I'm like, no, 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 the boy because we had a floating one in space, the boy should be floating, you know, somewhat lost like me. Um, and the girl should be really purposeful and like going for it because if you've met my daughters, you know, and, and, it, and that really sort of, I don't know, we, we put a lot into it. Yeah. Um, and, and over time, we put much more in them was really probably necessary because, you know, we've moved away from characters. We've, okay. you know, we've, we've stressing other things now, but certainly as you're sort of thinking about dual marketing yeah. to the parent and the kid, is there some science in, in, the, in the relation to, since you're mixing it with food, like for example, when I take multivitamins, I have to eat something first to trigger the digestion and then boom, I guess my body absorbs it better. From your perspective, you're kind of doing the two in one, but do people know that or do they care? Or is it something that you, you guys just know when you guys have beers together and no one else really cares about? Yeah, well, I think in general, and of course we're in a field where we, we're educating on almost everything. And you can sometimes, if I think about the bell curve of the population, mm -hmm. there are those people who will be highly interested, highly knowledgeable, and highly critical. Those people that are absolutely not interested would never touch. And then there's like, I don't know, what is it, 80%? But it's, it's everybody else that kind of needs, they need it easy. They want just, you know, make it good, make it affordable, make it clear to me, because I really don't have the time to engage with you and I'm not going to follow you too much and read everything you publish. So yeah, the science would say, um, and there's been some things written around taking supplements, that taking a supplement by itself is less efficacious than taking it in native food. Mm -hmm. um, and so you sort of have this, you know, not taking anything at all, right. worse, taking it as a supplement doesn't qu isn't quite as efficacious as taking it with food uh, or in functional food, mm -hmm. and then isn't perhaps, and this study I don't think has really been done, you know, in a native food. As I said earlier, omega-3s aren't really native to salmon anyway, so, so functional integration into food so that you are digesting, so that 
you can actually radio trace nutrients passing up through the blood-brain barrier mm -hmm. to make sure and to see that the nutrients are getting to where they need to get to. Yeah. And that's why we start and finish with science, right? Yeah. Uh, you really want to make sure that if I'm going to say food for hungry minds or eat, you know, eat this and we're helping to bridge the gap for the World Health Organization and it's for kids, I've got to make sure that I'm doing it right. Yeah. Price point. How did you guys decide on price point? And is it like super expensive because you're buying all this oil? What's the difficulty there? No, we've priced forward. Look, we started our company, I think, relatively uniquely as we started as a certified benefit corp. I'm very, very passionate about accessibility. Accessibility for various income levels. It shouldn't be that if, if kids should be getting a minimum amount of the nutrients they need for learning, for attention, for just their development, it shouldn't be a treat, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of models where we would launch a product or someone would launch a product, you know, West Coast and then and then over in Northeast and then start to, you know, in the natural channel. And there's a reason that we're in thousands of Walmarts today at a price point that is, yes, it has to be a small premium to the mainstream, mm -hmm. but we've gone mainstream first. Uh, we've partnered with Partnership for Healthy America because they're all about health equity. We're all about food equity. Um, I'm inspired by my wife, where you know, she grew up in a food insecure household, where choosing between medicine and food was, was a real thing. And so I want to make sure, to the extent possible, we can make this a staple and make it from you know, non-GMO product um, ingredients, organic, if, if and where possible, yeah. uh, but not at the expense of affordability and accessibility. Is getting into schools on your list? When I do research on this topic around foods, everything that's in schools just seems to be awful for you. And then obviously you have these behemoths that have secured those contracts. Pizza and it's Hut. like pizza. Yeah it's, yeah, it's the best marketing Taco on Coca-Cola. Yeah. Right. And, and I'm not trying to catch you know, any sort of doubt that they're not well-intentioned. But for the most part, we know, you know those foods really don't do much. Yeah. And so is that something on your agenda? Is it, is it easy? Any insight into like, is it even profitable? Is it worth it? I spent a lot of time during the pandemic looking at that as a, as a space in particular because during the pandemic people switched from the big bucket, you know, just scoop and, and eat into prepackaged foods. A lot of which for kids who, whose primary source of nutrition is actually at school. So that link between sending your kid to school because they actually get food and the link between a full tummy and learning is huge. So as part of a passion project, we, we, looked into it a lot it's really hard what are the obstacles there well so at the time we were if you if i was looking at yogurt there were a bunch of outdated usda rules about things needed to be low fat and so you know good good industry so you're, um, you're from the future on this category it's, yeah now on snacks i think you know so be it apple sauce etc then then it's going to be an affordability play we have managed to work with there's a group called every meal and what they do with schools and they're uh, in Minnesota, I used to be there, and some of the guys I used to work with have joined Every Mill. They will go into schools and they'll put um, they'll put food bags that are curated for whatever sort of ethnic diets that there are, of which they've got m many more than I could mention. And they put these food bags into kids' backpacks while they're in the class, so they can have food a food source during the weekend. It's really inspiring. And so, but the way they do it is they take in obviously donations and then they come and buy products like ours. So we work really hard with our value chain to make sure that we could, we could figure out a way to make that affordable and as close to parity with what they were putting in at the time. So instead of it being a fruit cup or, you know, you're getting into, I'm going to replace one serving of fruit with a Brainiac applesauce. It's really energizing for us. And it is possible. What I've got to get is my foundation set with the core business. And then right. there's a whole lot of space there to do. Sure. Is it profitable? I mean, if you start as a benefit corp, it's necessary, right? It's part of that. It's necessary to help attract the right talent. Right. Food service in general, it's not about profit. It is about revenue. Then you get into schools and you get into not-for-profits. When I watch my nephews, I'll just go back to this a lot because I just watch their behavior now. I'm like so fascinated by them as a consumer. Yeah. And I just see like they watch a lot of TV or like educational stuff. But then there is obviously commercials to some of it. Less and less on like the Amazon tablets. And if they're not like on if they're on Netflix, there's less and less commercials. But if there are commercials, I always think about it like if I'm in your space, how on earth do I get market share 
because to me, there's a feeding frenzy. People will pay whatever because you have their attention. You have them in front of you. It's not like an adult watching TV that's just going to look away. The kid is mesmerized by this thing. And so when it comes to your, like thinking about marketing, is TV something that you think about a lot? Do you have any commercials out? How do you view that? I used to run a brand where we did a bunch of TV, but we had massive ACV. So I meant that if, if I captured the eyeballs, then you could do the math to say, well, after 12 opportunities to see, right. I'm going to get a certain conversion rate. And now we look at that mathematics a little bit more in performance marketing for online, mm -hmm. where my targeting isn't quite so spray and pray. There the targeting was, I'll put it on to home and garden TV and a certain type of person. You know, obviously we can be a little bit more micro. Even when it comes to social advertising, we do that but it's far more productive for us to put our, our investment in advertising or awareness driving as close to the point of purchase as possible. Yeah. So if that's walmart.com, if it's amazon.com, or if it's in the last few feet of the path to purchase physically, mm -hmm. that's, you know, actually investment in good packaging mm -hmm. is probably number one thing I can yeah. do. Calling my Apple source brain squeezers and making sure that that's really prominent on the shelf as something that like it or hate it, it arrests your attention yeah. so that you then get to the, the primary, this has these nutrients. I imagine this year, so come middle of the year, we're going to, we're probably tripling our points of distribution and going, getting a lot more ACV in more than one category. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to start investing in the top of funnel. Yeah. There are media partners out there that I would love and aspire to work with. Mm -hmm. Even then, it's probably more in, in that space of, um, you know, we like people like Scary Mommy who just go out there, they've built a good audience who trust them because they, because they swear a lot and they just tell it how it is because you know what, this is really fucking hard, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and it is. And so if you can be real with the audience, I think that w you'll see us doing some of that yeah. and you'll see us developing a voice out there a little bit stronger than we have. That's um, fun. Do you ever feel like you have to temper yourself? Like you're always like, don't you get it, everyone? <laughs> no, because look, we're, if, if, if you've got three kids and yeah. you're in the grocery store, if you've made the mistake of getting one of those little shopping carts and they're, and they're windmilling around taking out people's ankles and then you want me to, what, stop and consider your brand? It was like launching in a pandemic where we're all freaked out by masks mm -hmm. and you're the, you're the new brand? No, I'm sprinting, grabbing whatever color packages that I think I normally buy. So we are screaming the benefit more than we were. Our packaging is far less if you forgive it, cerebral, you know, all of us sit in front of our nice computer screens and we look at it and we're like, yeah, that's it. Let, let's make the font just a little. Yeah. And that, is it that Pantone? And at the end of it, no, you've really got to just be on point and really obvious. Yeah. And so we're challenging ourselves more and more to say less, but say it louder. And so how many products do you have today? You have the applesauce, you have the yogurt. What else do you have? Yeah. So actually yogurt, we moved out. So we, we came out of that where there's plain economics on some things, right? So cost to serve and what it takes to win it was deeply unprofitable. And so there's a certain point where you got to, whilst I think, you know, for me, love the product, yeah. fantastic. But in terms of winning in a space that, you know, some of the big guys, there's only really four big yogurt companies. Sure. Was that an easy decision to make? Or did you guys no, keep trying to trudge no. up that mountain? Look, it's your baby, right? So it's really hard to, you kept being creative and entrepreneurial and I, you know, we'll figure this out. And then eventually you can't ignore the fact that the other one, there is line of sight to this weird gross margin thing, which mm -hmm. means you can then invest <laughs> yeah. in you know, at the top line, that is. So the, the, the fact that you can actually build a business, I mean, look, people have joined you, they've made career choices, you have an obligation to not only investors, but the team and, mm -hmm. you know, and so, yeah, we launched Applesource, and that's our main product today. Mm -hmm. we've, we're launching bars, we'll get national distribution with those come June. Okay. We've launched Almond Butter, that gets national distribution in May. And we've got peanut butter um, that's going into regional. How uh, does it come, the peanut butter and the almond butter? Is it kid friendly or is it for like in, in a tub? So okay. most of our stuff, we're starting off with single serve. Yeah. Single serve because that way I can make a promise to you that there's this amount of the nutrients in it. Mm -hmm. So it helps me feel good about calling it something like brain fuel, right? Mm -hmm. It's also from a product perspective, I know it's going to taste good each time because I know that um, it's not being open and closed and exposed to oxygen and those that things we sense. talked about before. Do you worry about any competition? Like, or do, do you, have you seen anybody try to copy you? Yeah. You, you've seen In it? the yogurt space, we flattered um, when, you know, one of the big guys um, came in 
and launched a product. Who are the big guys in yogurt? I, I, so think I, think Chobani, think Dat- Chobani Donifield, Oikos. Stonyfield, um, who okay. are now owned. So you got Danon, Danon um, Lactalis okay. is a big company that owns a bunch of the brands. And Danon owns Horizon, and Horizon launched something called Growing Years with the two nutrients we had. And has anyone tried to do that for applesauce as well? Like no, coffee? not not yet. And I will say it's really hard, mm-hmm. like really hard. And we've got some nice patent. So trying to think about the IP as well, because yeah. when once you actually figure out, it takes a whole bunch of different ways to do it. Mm-hmm. And so they're applied for. Um, so we'll see. Also, look, I'm not trying to go and be the number one applesauce company, right? We're literally here to give brain nutrition for the whole family. You know, it's it's as important for my for my mom, mm-hmm. you know, in, in her elderly years as it is for me to try and perform today and my kids. Mm-hmm. So I don't know that anyone's gonna necessarily see us as like we we just took over the category and, and rendered something. People will probably try and describe us as niche, uh, even though I think with some of the distribution and, and, and some of the growth we're seeing, you know, we, we play a role uh, in helping to provide some category growth. Is that what drove the rebrand then from Brainiac Kids to Brainiac Foods is that the desire to show that you can be good just beyond this one category? Like, you know, you said your mom and your kids can both benefit the same way. I mean, what was that decision like and how long did it take you to switch? It was always part of the plan from day one. We just decided to launch in kids part of, partly because of that that sort of genesis story of where we started and partly the focus of, you know, Jonathan and I as two dads with three kids. But we always envisioned our product range would be something consumed by, you know, the broader family. There's always a question mark if you go older, should it be a different brand? Is it the same brand? And we see, we see the Brainiac family, we get notes from, from you know, 70 year old consumers of our applesauce saying they love it yeah. um, because it's, the ensure of applesauce. Right, it's got, it's got all of the, um, which is which is fantastic, right? It and, actually and is, you know it's what? good. And grandmas watch their kids. Grand, grandparents watch their grandkids. Uh, they're eating well, the same food. An incredible amount, again, on, on, on social, we get an awful lot of grandparents buying this for the first time when they're looking after the kids because they, they've got to go and they've got to, they're going to make a choice. Mm-hmm. So they're actually kind of some of our biggest advocates. Mm-hmm. Um, as, Have you found anything in, in terms of like your customer data where you're like, wow, that's really surprising? Like, I always try to think about it like, here you are, you have kind of this uh, more thoughtful consumer or at least like, you know, biohacker. I hate to use that, but basically like kind of a biohacker type of type of profile. Is there something that you're like, okay, this person, this income, this city that you found to be, oh, that's, in, uh, we wouldn't have expected that? Um, yeah, it's somewhat the opposite, right? So the part of the benefit of deciding to be mainstream in America, even though you know we're based on the West Coast, but there's a lot of transparency, which is awesome and unless you have a problem and then it's really you know vivid but at least, at least it helps you deal with things really quickly but when you do get good reviews and and obviously there are two types of review there's the review that you let's say stimulate through marketing and and part of the gig is that people provide reviews and then there's just the reviews that come mm-hmm. on the platforms that you're being sold so we we've been doing very well on thrive market there's some great reviews coming from there but they're coming from florida and kentucky coming from all around the country and when people play back the, I just love that it has omega-3s and choline. And, oh, wow. and it's from a state that you, you know. A Trump supporter state is what you're saying. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. No, because look, our kids and our, you know, we're all fully into this, right? Into our families. And that's part of the, that emotional connection of sitting and, sitting and thinking about my parents aging, me aging, and my kids being, look, if I'm going to invest hundreds or thousands of dollars in, whatever it is, music lessons, extracurricular math, but I'm not feeding their brain. And, and the same thinking forward about Sudoku, memory games, et cetera. But if we're not taking care of that engine, mm-hmm. and that's something that's resonated throughout, mm-hmm. even though people, any strategist will tell you to go to the coast first. Mm-hmm. And that actually hasn't necessarily been for us. We found Texas is a huge state for us in terms of demand. Um, and it's so far, we're pretty spread where the population is. I wonder if that's because of Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan talks about all this stuff all the time. He's, yeah. got, he's got his own company, Alpha Brain. Yeah, so so that was purchased by Unilever now. That's one of the things that as, as you look into this space of what we eat, what we consume, and how it impacts our brain. That's why we're starting with kind of nutrients in food based on clear science. And there's this space, this nootropic space, 
which is really interesting, right? These sort of different shots and different, and, and people talk about the nutrients associated with brain. And so we look at that, we watch it, but we stay away from this idea of hacking or a nootropic stack until frankly, our own scientific nutrition advisory board says, you need this, you need this much, and here's the clinical proof. So we want to okay. link to the clinical studies on everything we do. That's smart. Yeah. Um, and it's not, we, we love the innovation. Right, right, right. Uh, and if something comes up that we think has some degree of efficacy, we'll either add into our scientific nutrition advisory board, we just did for some, some people that really look at curcumin and have done the science, have done the research mm -hmm. um, to make sure we're current. Mm -hmm. um, but mostly so that you know, no one should listen to me saying, you need this much for your brain. No, you need, we need the guys that are in academics and I get practice that. in neurologists. Yeah. When you signed up to, for this company, you're a little early, right? You're, you're in a market where you're still educating the consumer, which is always difficult. And so in your head, is this like a 10 year thing for you personally? Where are you guys in the raising right now? Like what, what your seed, right? No, we, we've you, done a, you've done an a. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you've done an a, so you're approaching, I guess the moment in CPG of like, this is gonna go or, uh -huh. or not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and maybe maybe with the pandemic we're in that second moment of that. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. As, as things changed and we lived for two years where we spent the time innovating yeah. more than expanding, and now this year it's it's trying to keep hold of the demand as everyone's kind of coming back and in in some ways for us all of us thinking a bit more about our own sort of mental wellness. Uh, and that of our kids and that conversation being a little bit more open has been to the benefit. If you look at just media mentions and searches for things like brain fog, yeah. they're up 400 yeah. percent. And, you know, so that the environment now is is better. And this idea of cognitive functional foods mm -hmm. and obviously we've been out there, you know, but it's when people like you know Harvard and Nat Geo are coming out writing about it that, that you can feel that little bit of it's nice to actually feel a little bit of wind on the back, not in totally. your face. Totally. Do you think this is a seven year thing, 10 year thing for you? Like what is your grand vision for the exit? Is it, is it proving, proving the category? You have three, four, five, maybe six products out, you know, everything there is to know about getting this into a consumer. And then one of the big four purchase you guys and you're on your way, or is it, do you guys want to run this company? We want to look worrying too much about the end yeah. when the beginning is so hard like really hard <laughs> how hard is it <laughs> it's fucking hard so you gotta, you really gotta, and it is and it's all i mean any anyone that's in this small company and we're 12 people right running what's becoming you know national distribution with many different product lines and you're know, tripling our points of distribution and the buyers during the supply chain crisis still it's on time in full uh is the first thing you've got to worry about so we have to wake up and just get on with it and I've always actually trusted that if I sprint at something and I do a good job and I course correct along the way, good things will happen. Now, I have a very non-linear path to here with all sorts of bumps and bruises. But I think if we sat here worrying about either building the company to look and feel a certain way, you know, I don't have a HR, IT department. I don't have a, you know, that's me. That's good. Right? Don't I'm ever the get finance HR department. department. I'm the, yeah. you know, all of that. We get the essential people that are passionate about what we're doing. And we have a set of core investors that came in at Seed that have stuck with us throughout. And we really try and keep things lean. So what, where it goes, I think my job is to get it, make sure it's stood on its feet, it's healthy. We address not only growth, but profitability, something I think people mm -hmm. don't think about as enough. Because if, if we can address that, then, and I think maybe some of that comes from that sort of being a certified benefit corp. We can't really make a positive impact and, and address things like schools or stakeholders, community, employees, if we don't have a healthy company. Yeah. I think once we're there, ask me the question. And there's a personal point of pride as well, right? The people that trust me with their careers to join our company, yeah. they take a risk. And, and I would be damned if they, if they end up making a bad choice. Yeah, so what's the next big venture coming down the path for Brainiac? You got the bars coming. I yeah, got, I got the bars coming. Not the We've alcoholic got the bars. <laughs> Very yeah. delicious, no, got, nutritious, of, yeah, right, right, right. sweet bars. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got some big launches coming up. There's one that's indicative coming as well that I can't talk about yet. But there's three different product lines confirmed. 
going into national distribution with, with some of the big guys. We're just head down. Expos, we're going back to Expo West. What is it like? Is it is it like, do you make a lot of relationships that are worth it in terms of business? Is it like, what do you get out of it yeah, when you go? Is it sales or is it mind share, uh, tips and tricks? What's the thing that you walk away from being like, this was worth it for this reason? Look, you get a you get a bit of a sense of what's what's out there. What are people focused on? It's shocking how many to this day you're going to see how many new coconut waters are out there and how oh, many. Oh, really? You know, it wasn't that, didn't we do that? You know, so there's a little bit of that. And then there would be that, those new things that really, you know, catch on and some of the brands that you're just like, yes, that's going to work. And so you've, you've had some of the folks on, on here. So what we've got out of it, we got national distribution from Whole Foods first. And so you meet the buyers for sure. Yeah. But you have to be, you have to work it like you're, yeah. like you're standing outside your restaurant, you know, in, <laughs> on the beach saying yeah. come on in come on in you know, so we have we had back in 2019 we had a photo of like if we could see like who are the five people if we could see the yogurt buyer from whole foods that would be amazing and we had the photo and one of our one like of our most team wanted list. actually were like there she is and then just Poof, and then held her until you know and and then she's like look i've got one spot and then we our, our walmart relationship was built off of off of Expo as well, where one of the guys in charge of innovation and these sort of incubators, because they're astonishingly committed to helping young brands in a way that I don't think they get any credit for. They've been the number one supporter of, of ours you know, through through hard times and performance. Do they get it? Yeah. Your angle? Yeah? Yeah. They understand? Okay. You're totally right about that. When you think Walmart, you think kind of old, not so fun, probably not innovative, no science. You just think, Cool stuff yeah. that's hit the mega market, but and I then guess, what we've got to not. do, what we all should do, is then go into the store and really look. I mean, sure, it's overwhelming, but if you take any of the aisles, some of the stuff that they're doing, mm -hmm. that we're going to be part of, or even in other places, you know, that I just saw they're partnering with Space NK over in Beauty, you know, a truly upscale English. You know, they were one of the big leaders and adopters in the organic space, right? And then they they learn and, and modify in functional foods. They're doing the same thing. If you look at their health and wellness pledge and their affordability pledge, mm -hmm. and then you marry that against what I said earlier about why we exist, mm -hmm. you know, food equity and food being the first line of defense for healthcare, which just fundamentally what you know, I get passionate about. Yeah. If we address our nutrition, I mean, if you look at that inequality of, yes, full bellies and satiety is important to learn, but empty nutrition. Right. So they're committed to that. And it's one of the, it's not the only reason that I get in, right? I've also got to make it tasty, price right, right. get the margins that the they stuff. need, yeah. you know, do all of the base business. But with that in mind, they've been, they've been incredible. And they gave us a space. They were like, look, it was March. Could you be in 200 stores in July back in 2019 if I put you in an incubator? Yeah. Shit. Of course you say yes. Yeah, 100%. No problem. I'll be there tomorrow. If 200, you 300. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, they leave and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so you, you got, got the Whole Foods, side. Walmart. Who else did you meet at Expo West? Honestly, those were the key. The, yeah, those are the, huge. The, this, the, is, the, this is becoming an ad for Expo West, which is great. Because yeah. I've always wondered because, you know, I've been to countless conferences in different industries. And sometimes I'm like, we're not going again. I can tell you that there are many that I haven't been to. Some of the, some of the reason that you don't get the return is, first of all, if you don't work it like you're on fire and you're going bankrupt if you don't. So if you're not in the aisle... A lot of people will be trying to walk past you. Yeah. The people with their badges turned around. The only reason that it works is because you've got to pull them in. Do you have a gimmick? Do you have a, a hack? Do you give them something for free? Do you have like a cool thing that they're interested in that's not related to the product? We don't. We we have energy and we try and judge real quick about being how to be I'm gonna give adequately you persistent. I'm going to give you one. You ready? This is the thing I did. So my first company was a bow tie company, as I told you. Yeah. Every other company I was a part of or started we would make bow ties with that logo on them and everyone would talk about it at every conference because we'd give them out for free. And I just think about Brainiac Foods, kind of sciencey, kind of professory. Yeah. Put your logo on there. It's a cheap thrill. You're talking about like a buck 50 per bow tie and people never forget. You're like, you're the bow tie guy. You gave me a bow tie last time. You know, the for one years. thing, I just hired a guy. You didn't like my idea? I loved your <laughs> idea. I'm going to build on it. Um, Mark, we all, <laughs> we, we had uh, a good, a good friend of ours. He was the co-founder, co-CEO of Allbirds. So we're like, Hey dude. And this was back in 2019 and it, things were going really, really well. So I'm like, 
we're all gonna we're all gonna have matching red all birds. So in at the first show we went to, we were like, you guys are the all birds guys. So we've kind of borrowed his brand equity a little bit. And then I just hired, I just got a new head of sales, a guy that I couldn't have ever attracted previously. He said, I saw you guys. You were the guys wearing the shoes. Wow. So it's similar to the bow tie. Yeah. So, all right, next year, bow ties. Yeah. No pressure. I just know it worked, and it was, it was really interesting. Yeah, it's a wacky um, stunt or a gimmick. You yeah, know? a whack-ass stunt, they call it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, look, man, anything else we should know? Anything else that uh, you want to you wanna talk about? Look, I think that hopefully I've, co- I've conveyed that this is about like just feeding our families the right way, yeah. um, and whether it's whether it's brainiac or whether it's trying out cooking with some some uh, other you know brain foods like salmon or putting blueberries in a lunchbox. Right, it, it's yeah. it's all the little things. When I was a kid, my mom would put fish oil in like all my soups, and I wouldn't know. She didn't tell me till I was like sixteen, and then she would make um, beet. I mean, this is twenty years ago to th- thirty years ago. She would make like beet smoothies, yeah. and I had no idea they were beets. I just thought they were delicious purple things concoctions and she never told me did she use anything to sweeten it or or anything of course mango i mean natural stuff like mango yeah my mom's from peru and so it's like the fish capital of uh, you know it's on the coast and so fish becomes a huge part of the diet everything and people in terms of like omega-3s are very aware that this is the brain food and so you grow up like if if i had an exam wednesday i had tuesday was fish that's just that was normal and i think what you're doing is a great mission to make that accessible to everyone, no matter where they are on the planet or in America. And I think that's really cool. Thank you. One of the key points, our pediatrician advisors say, look, it's not nutritious if they don't eat it. And that's kind of a mantra when we develop a product. It doesn't have to be holier than now. Let's, let's sure, no sugar added, whatever. Um, let's get the fundamentals right, but let's just make it fun. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, thank appreciate you. Appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you, guys. That was our conversation with Mark from Brainiac Foods. Since you've stuck around for the credits, please consider subscribing if you're not already. Or even better, leave us a review wherever you get your podcast. We can be found at Startup Storefront on every social media platform with the exception of Twitter, where we can be found at STS Podcast LA. The team consists of Diego Torres Palma, Natalia Capolini, Lexi Jameson, Owen Capolini, and me, Nick Conrad. Our music is by Double Touch. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you next time.